Whether it's your baseball picks or your way too early football picks or your tennis picks, you got to pick them at Sports Interaction. Oh. That's right. It's Canada Sportsbook. Listen, before the game starts, live and play or how your favorite player will perform, doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction is Canada's sportsbook with the most competitive odds. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all that sports betting has to offer. You head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. One more time, that's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, please play responsibly. <laughs> Adam and Steve, if What's you could change the outcome of Game 7, 2013 against Boston, or Game 5, 2020 against Columbus, which do you choose? Uh, 20, uh, Boston. Boston. I think that did psychological damage. I think Columbus felt inevitable. Uh, uh, Boston was like, that was a damaging blow. That, Boston. Uh, yeah. Boston, yeah. because it, that loss, I don't think changed Leafs management's mind, really. When it, sh- on, when it maybe should have. Yeah, they were going to try to get Clarkson anyway. They were probably going to try to get Boland anyway. They were going to try to upgrade on Reimer anyway. Whereas I think Kyle Dubas made his mind up about this team in February. Yep. I uh, agree. When, when he didn't do anything at the trade deadline and that was obvious with Nick Robertson randomly, you know, just here you go. You're on the third line now and Kasperi Kapanen getting traded. Like they're not, it's Kyle Dubas, I think is more along the wavelength that we were where this team is not, this team is not, not good enough because of these five games mm-hmm. they're not good enough because of these 70 that preceded them exactly i think he also said in his press conference they said you know you've drawn a lot of criticism in like in a in a post because we were hard on on, on the year-end press conference mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but he's had a press conference in that or uh said, you know with the kasperi cabin and trade and he, somebody asked him about the criticism that he's taken and to his to his credit he said it's been warranted like and it and, and it has he knows. He knows. He knows. He's not he stupid. I, I think I, they made I, their decision after the David Ayers game. They're like, uh oh, we're not good enough. Yeah. yeah. That's why they went out and what was their big, what was their big move? They got the ghost of Robin Leonard for like a draft pick, mm-hmm. and they should have never traded, let him go. They traded noted Stanley Cup, uh, playoff winning goaltender Michael Hutchison for Callie Rosen. Uh, Yo, that dude won a playoff game. Michael Hutchinson. And it, it was knew. such a hutch. It was such a hutch game. Yeah, he played. Had a, ter- he didn't play. He was awful. He wasn't great, and <laughs> no. they just outscored the other team. Yeah, no, they out. They outscored uh, the other team's shots. <laughs> yeah. That's how you win. You know what that game reminded me of is, you know, with Freddie, the criticism has often been, oh well, they, you know, there are some games where, or no, it wasn't Freddie. It was Garrett Sparks. They never gave him goal support, and with Hutch, I was like, Jesus, they gave him like four goals every game. Yeah. Yeah. Lost yeah. every game like six four. Ah! Uh, Jesse, or we like, got time for oh, one more. We do one awesome. more question. This one comes from Mitchell Bader. What team do you find the most boring to watch or even follow? Whether it's the way they play or the moves of the GM or the fans. Which team? Dude, if you don't most... say the Minnesota Wild, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Which team is the most boring? Although that's changed. Chuck Fletcher's not there. Yeah, that's the thing, right? That's the thing uh... with them. Let me let me look. Let me look real quick. Let me look real Adam, quick. you got an answer? You know what? I'm. Uh, it, it comes down to, I think, it, sometimes it really, it, it's, that's a very personal one because, and I don't mean to make this too deep, but, you know, sometimes the stories are very interesting, but you're just so burnt out on the team that you are like, okay, like, what else is the problem now? Um, one of the teams that I would just genuinely like to talk about more positively and have tried and have tried and have tried and done everything I possibly can is the coyotes. And the, since I the start about them, I, the, since the start of this show, like one of the first questions, Jesse, that I prepped to ask Steve is how are the coyotes still a franchise? And that was in 2013. Right. Cause at that point they were owned by the NHL, right? It was a, and they had gone to the third round, I think the year previous, but it was like, it's still like, what do we like? what are we holding on to this for? And it's not because I think that they shouldn't have a team or they shouldn't be a team or they don't, their fans don't deserve it. They deserve all of it. But even when the things for the coyotes seem to go well, they go back. 
There's just nothing about this. Like, you know, they finally seem to like they're going to, they got a couple good goals, Ranta and Kemper, and they've got Oliver Ekman Larson, who I, or I guess the ghost of what he used to be. And, you know, some good players up front and Shalmerson and Stepan and like all these guys. And then there's some bad contracts and uh, the general manager leaves after, you know, uh, allowing them to um, uh, train or test players before the draft. See, that's at least that, like, stupid. You know what I mean? Like, that's at least interesting. It's, it's interesting, but it's always like I guess it's maybe it's just depressing. Like I just it feel is. I feel horrible for Coyotes fans. Right? Where does where does Buffalo fall in there? Oh, so sick of the Buffalo shit too. Yeah. What about the, where do where do the Devils fall in there? The Sens. I don't mind the Devils as much. The Sens, no, they're wack. The Sens, are, the Sens, to me, are a big, juicy burger. I love them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to throw a name in there. They are rarely ever bad enough to be talked about in the lottery conversation. They're rarely ever good enough to be talked about in any good conversation. Um, there's constant tumult, but it's always whispered about behind the scenes, and it's just cloak and dagger front office stuff, and they never really do anything. I'm talking about the Florida Panthers. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Like, boo. What are you? Boo. I, I, Bill Zito is their GM. Oh, yeah. Cool. Did that happen today. But that yeah. is cool, by the way. Long time. He's got an interesting story. Long time uh, Columbus assistant GM. He's been there since sure. 2013. He might be great. Might, be, might great. be great. But, you know, he – it's the most interesting thing to happen to them in a while. Like, you need to – Bill Zito needs to get me jacked up about the Florida Panthers. And I already said, new GM, some good players, decent little contract situation. Make I'm, them good. Make them interesting. Make I'm them a curious. contender. Yarmo Kekalainen is one of the ballsiest general managers in this league. That, that man has a steel stomach. I wonder if Bill Zito's picked up some of that. And I wonder how many – because because you got to think. they got to shed salary this year. We know that. They're not going to be a cap team. Uh, they have to be competitive. They've got Bobrovsky's deal. They're going to make some that, moves. How much of that was moves. Yarmo, and how much of that was, you know, maybe some guidance from Bill Zito? Can we throw the Kings in there? Well, that's a lot of teams. <laughs> it is a lot of teams. <laughs> a lot of teams. Exactly. I think. I think. I think. I think Florida is a good one. I think Arizona is a good one. I think Buffalo is a good one. Buffalo is for sure a good one. Jesse, what is it for you? <clears throat> the most boring NHL team. I think you guys nailed it with the uh, the ones that are just consistently terrible and not fun. Sabers and Coyotes. See, I think I think at least LA is fun because you know they're bad right now because they're rebuilding. Mm-hmm. That's fun to me. The the Kings were good. Now they're not, and then they'll be good again eventually. Uh, you think? Uh, but like it's it, it's these teams that are constantly stuck in a flux of like, ugh. yeah. The, like the Panthers yeah. finished this season fifteenth. Which is just the most Panthers thing ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, I yeah. think of 15th. I think of the Florida Panthers. Uh, you're lucky to be 15th. This is a good season for them. Yeah. Can I shout out one person before uh, we go? Sure. Sure. Uh, the Leafs hired Sam Kim as the club's video and coaching coordinator. Uh, Sam Kim oh. was once the mascot for the New York Islanders. Love. Do- Love yes. that Kids, story. Everybody out there believe in your fucking dreams follow mm-hmm. it to the t and just go after it that's <laughs> the craziest journey i've heard in a long time yo that's sick mascot and, to video coordinator and congrats, congrats to dude. sam and that ain't the end that's just the beginning so right. congratulations sam and if you want a little bit more information there's a staff page for him on eliteprospects.com. i didn't know that was a thing he has previously been a head coach at columbia university a skating coach a video coach a director of hockey operations in the wow. ncaa an assistant coach a video coach in the ahl and it looks like he was a video coach for the as far as i can tell the south korean hockey team that's wow. cool. That's, that's cool. And then really he cool. Came back over with the Bakersfield Condors. See, so those Sam are great. Kim that's has, a great story. Sam Kim has had some jobs, man. Shout out Sam Kim. He's only 35. That's a crazy resume <laughs> for a guy who's only 35. 